Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Faceless. The Faceless is by Alter Ego, and it's for two to four players. It takes about 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 and up. In the game The Faceless, you are children, and you are searching for a lost child. And you're going to enter this tree, or this hollow. And as you do that, you're going to find a bunch of these shadow children that are going to be walking around, and you're going to be using them to manipulate where you move. However, there is a monster that is chasing you you around the board and as it moves towards you you're going to try and run away from it all while successfully collecting certain on certain things like these little bubble things and once you collect them you're going to be using them with their special powers if you can collect them all before you're captured or before this deck runs out you're going to succeed however when you play cards on your turn you're going to have to use one of the cards from the top of the deck to issue an event that happens and the game gets more challenging depending on how difficult you want to make it and as you place these event cards down certain things will happen maybe perhaps your character will move in the way you don't want or the monster will move closer to you or you have to discard cards from your hand these cards are essential because you need them to be able to move the pieces around the board along with your own character piece as you go throughout the game collecting those pieces once you get them all you win let's talk about it so here we have the faceless i'm going to go over a content overview as well as a setup overview this is the board of the game which will have a top side board as well as you're going to get different magnets you're going to have three of these guys they're going to be on the outside and the billy goat that's going Going to be on one of the baubles here. These are the baubles right here that you're going to be trying to collect throughout the game. You're also going to put your compass on the portion where this arrow is pointing here, and along with all the other baubles where these arrows are pointing. And you're going to place these things on top of these little circles here, and you can place them anywhere you want on there as long as they're attaching them. And you have to make sure that people are able to go through them. So there has to be at least one space to get through. You're also going to get a deck of cards here. These are event cards as well as cards you'll be playing. And over on this side of the board is going to be the bobble section where once you collect a bobble you're going to turn it over and then put it on the location that it corresponds to in which case you can turn this over to use the ability after you've collected it you're also going to get to choose between a bunch of different characters and they all have their own unique abilities but one is able to let you play two cards this one here is an additional card and so on and so forth they all have their own extra aspects. Over here on the side of the board is going to be the events side. And for an easy game, you only need to have five cards. You're gonna just draw them from the deck and make sure you place them on the correct areas. This is blue, red, purple, green, and yellow. And whenever you play a card during the game, you're going to be placing them down on this little section. I'll explain that in the uh, walkthrough. These are going to be your hand. You get three cards a piece, as well as a uh, character is chosen for each player. Set the deck here, and then the game's ready to begin. Let's go. So on your turn, it's pretty simple. You're going to play a card from your hand. And when you play a card from your hand, different things will happen. For instance, you can play any of the colored pieces, and there's going to be yellow, green, and blue. When you play one of them, you're going to um, use your uh, use your character the character you choose, which maybe this is the green one here, and you're going to move him on the board and rotate him however you want to try and angle your children to go in the direction you want them to go. And then it'll tell you how many spaces you can move your children, as well as the other colors as well. Here's the blue and here's the yellow ones. You also could get a compass, and a compass will let you move wherever you want, no matter where you're facing. And this guy here, this is the bad guy, you can actually rotate him however you want whenever you, whenever you play this card, as well as moving him in one space and then moving yourself in three. And those are kind of the idea of how you're going to be moving when you're playing these cards. Your hand doesn't refill, however, so you have to choose to end your turn and simply draw up to your hand size. And if you do that, still an event will happen. So no matter what, when you play a card or not, an event will happen. You're just going to take a card from the top of the deck and see what it is, and you're going to put it down. Depending on what card you're drawing and placing down is what's going to happen. Sometimes you'll be discarding cards from your hand or a different person's hand. Other times you're going to be rotating all the characters on the board. And on another occasion, the monster or boss is going to chase you around the level. And if you can collect all the pieces, you're going to win the game. So you're going to need to be trying to do that. Let me go ahead and show you a couple turns down below so you can see how it works and how the magnets kind of function. Okay, so we're back to the gameplay walkthrough. We'll go ahead and take you through a couple turns. We're gonna be playing with these two players here, and you got the char character that holds four cards and the character that can play two cards. Uh, we also have the easy mode. We have five cards here, but you can go to medium and even hard mode, which believe is up to seven cards in here. You're gonna be placing uh, the five cards when you drop them from the deck in the locations that they go into the color. So yellow with yellow, blue with blue, so on and so forth. Let's go over the abilities here and then what the memories do. So this one is for every card that's here, you're gonna move your compass one, one space towards wherever it's 
it's pointing, which is the red area. Uh, and then for this one here, for every billy goat card in the display, you're going to move the billy goat, face it towards the player, and move it one space per card, always making sure to face it towards the players. For this one here, every two blue cards that are in this area, you're going to draw a card from the deck and place it in here, wherever it's supposed to locate. So at four cards, you draw two and place it. And those cards won't trigger, it just makes the game more difficult. For this green one here, for every two green cards here, you're going to have a, a person discard a card. So two cards, somebody discards a card. For four cards, somebody discards a card and somebody else discards a card, or that same player discards two. And this one over here is for each uh, yellow card that is played, uh, for each every two yellow cards that are played here, you're going to have each player uh, well, you get to choose uh, one of these guys here to rotate 180 degrees. So at two of these guys, you'd have to choose to move this one at 180 degrees, and at four, you'd have to make two uh, uh, two guys do it. So that's how it works. Uh, over here, you've got the memories, and for each one of these that you obtain, you can use them on your turn to perform an action, but you can only use it once. Uh, they are also able to prevent you from dying, because if you hit any of these areas over here, you're going to instantly lose unless you can go ahead and disc, uh, basically use one of the baubles. So over here, this is going to allow you to rotate one of these guys here. For this one here, you can go ahead and discard three cards from the threat display. For this one here, you get to draw a hand of three cards when you have none, because during the game, you're not going to draw your cards back unless you actually end your turn to draw cards, which is going to actually trigger the events. This one over here is move your compass in any one direction you'd like, and these three here are basically like playing one of the cards, which I'll explain in a second. This one here will move the move the billy goat one direction and then rotate them how you want as well. So let's go ahead and begin the game. The first thing we're going to do is have this player go first and he'll actually go ahead and use a card. Now we're going to try and obtain this bobble here. It's really important that we get that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this blue one here. Now when you play the card you, uh, of the chosen color of one of these faceless, you're going to actually take this faceless and you can move it in any direction you want provided you don't go over another faceless and you don't go next to another faceless. So for instance, this pair character here, he can actually move right here if I want and then I can rotate him. Now I'm going to try my best to get him to to make this magnet face over here, because that's what I want to do. So, like, that's fine. Now we're going to actually count uh, on this side here, it says two, that's how many spaces you move the compass in the red direction. One, and, ooh, we faced it, two. So, once you go on top of one of these memories here, you're going to actually take it and flip it over to see what side it is and put it over here. Now we're going to go ahead and perform the action of the turn, or the uh, event of the turn, where you're going to take one of these cards here and flip it over to see what it is and place it on the board. Then you're going to perform the action if there is one available. For instance here, of course, there's two cards here right now, so that means that you're going to have to rotate one of these characters 180. And it's probably in our best interest to move this guy because we no longer want to go this way. So we're going to rotate him 180 degrees. Now after we do that, it is the next player's turn. Remember though, if, it, if this character, if the, our characters go on this side of the board, we'll actually go across the board, um, whereas this guy cannot. And also, we can't go on these areas. If we ever go on these areas, then we're going we're going to have to discard a bobble or a lose. So you don't want to go on these areas here. And the billy goat can't go on them either. He's always going to take the closest direction to you. So we now pass this way. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy's hand of cards, and we're going to actually try and select one for him to move because we want to get the rest of these bobbles here. To win the game, we need to collect all of these bobbles and then have him not catch us, as well as this deck not deplete. So we'll go ahead and use. Oh, I don't know. We'll take this green card here, and that means we can take this guy and move him how we want. And we'll try and rotate them the best we can. Okay, that'll work. Now the compass will move two spaces, one and two, and then we'll stop and another event will trigger. We'll go ahead and flip this card over. It's a blue one. So there's uh, three cards here, but for every two, we're gonna go ahead and put another one on this board. So there's just gonna be two there to, to, you know, to trigger. So yeah, here we go. Now we have uh, one card here. This doesn't trigger though because it came from this effect. This effect does not trigger the cards, it just makes the game more difficult to complete. So after that, he can choose to use his ability or simply pass his turn, in which case the next player is going to get to go. And what are we gonna use here? Actually, let's go ahead and use the Billy Goat for once. We can show you how that works. So with the Billy Goat, whenever a player plays a Billy Goat, you can actually move the Billy Goat in any direction you'd like, as long as you don't do an illegal move, and then rotate him how you'd like too. So we'll go ahead and move this guy here, and then we're going to rotate the billy goat. Mm, like that. Okay, hopefully that works. We don't want to go in this space here. All right, now we're going to move two spaces towards the compass. One, and two. Okay, we're careful. We don't want to hit that. That's very important we don't hit that. Now, after that, we're going to go ahead and take a card from the top here, and the event will trigger. Oh, okay. One player has to discard a card because there's two green here. So we'll go ahead and choose to discard this one right here, that's not as important. And now it's the next player's turn. He only has one card left, so he could choose to pass and drop his cans. He's also able to trade, 
or he can choose to play his last card. You don't get cards though unless you end your turn without playing a card, in which case you get your hand of three cards, and the event is still going to trigger. So what do we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and pass our turn so we can get a couple more cards. So we're going to gain two cards here, and we're going to pass our turn, but the event will still trigger. Okay, we got a blue card here, so now there's four. So we're going to put two more cards onto the board here, making it even more difficult. One and ooh, two. And now the next player is going to go. Now we definitely want to get this to not move uh, in this direction. So we're going to go ahead and choose one of these guys here to... Try and arrange it so when we pick this guy up, we can try and move him around. Or if we think that's not going to be strong enough, maybe we'll get this one here. It's important we try and figure out what's the best for the group. But that's the idea of the game. We're simply going to be moving our compass in the direction to get these baubles here and avoiding this guy. Because eventually what's going to end up happening is you're going to draw one of these cards here and place it here. In which case you're going to move this guy this, that many spaces towards the players and then face, right? So this would be like this, facing, and then one and two. Now if they actually hit this guy we'd be in deep trouble. So we have to be very careful and that's the basic idea of the game. We, whenever we want we can use these baubles or save them to prevent us from t hitting these places and dying. And if we can collect all these before the deck runs out, but before he lands on top of us, we win the game. All right, let me tell you what I think about it. So you have to be very careful where you're moving the magnets and how you're moving them around the board, as well as watching how far the billy goat is away from you. Specifically because these billy goat cards, I had, what, three of them to begin the game with? And that's pretty unlucky, unfortunately, out of the 12 in the entire deck to start the game off like that. And drawing one more four spaces is scary. Now, whenever you go across the board, if you hit an edge, you're going to go to the opposite end of the board. However, the billy goat does not do that. He'll just stop in his tracks. He's not going to be able to go across the board, but you can. And remember, whenever the billy goat hits another magnet, that magnet's going to be removed until the next time somebody plays that card. Additionally, when you have to discard, when you have to draw cards up to three, if you have no more cards left or just need to draw, you're still going to have to activate the events. And the events are going to make the game increasingly more difficult to the point where either the deck runs out and you lose or the billy goat is going to run into you and you're going to lose as well. So the game is challenging, right? And it has a little added effect of these little traps on these little specific locations or little hands. And if you were to go onto them, you're going to instead have to turn over these little modules, little um, bubbles, as many as you can to stop from going over there. So it's kind of like a penalty for whenever you are going to the trap, you actually don't get to do that. So you have to be careful. You don't want to do that. You don't want to lose your special abilities because they're too good. Special abilities include drawing drawing up to three cards, rotating one of these little stand thingies to any direction you want, to moving your character in one space, one direction that you choose to, as well as rotating all three different colors, as well as the billy goat, because you want them to be forcing you to go the way you want to go. That's the basic idea of it. Let's go ahead and talk about what I think. So when I first saw this game, I thought of the magnets and how they function, just like I would think of Gravity Warfare and how it has to move the moving board and stuff like that. And if you haven't seen that video, you should check that out because it's also a very unique game just like this one. But this one here is super cool. I love the way the magnets interact with how you move. And you have to rotate them so that you're going to move the way you want. Now, some magnets are bigger than others, and so that is going to mean that these little guys here are going to affiliate, uh, kind of move in the direction that uh, the larger ones are going to force you to go. And so you have to use them to your best discretion. And sometimes you'll be moving and suddenly you're just going to go the opposite way, like you saw, and that's not going to be very good because you weren't really recognizing how they were going to be functioning with each other. So the more you play, the more you're going to understand how they function and the better luck you're going to have. You can increase the difficulty by adding more cards to the event uh, spaces below from 6 to 9 to 12, I think, to make it almost near impossible. But as it is, it's a challenging game. All four players works well fine. Two players is just as fine. Three players, they, it all works to the same way. You're either going to really, really like this game with all the player counts or you're not. And I think it's going to depend on whether you like the mechanisms of the, of the magnets. And for me, this is a no-brainer. I really really, really like it. Of course, this is a prototype, so I'd have to keep messing around with the magnets and whatnot, but once this is fully fleshed out, I would personally pick this game up just because of how unique and interesting it is and how it kind of functions in this cooperative way. And I like that cooperation in this game. It's always nerve wracking every time the events pop up and you're praying that the Billy Goat card's not going to pop up and get you. And it does, of course. It always does for me. But overall, it's fun. The art is so cool. I, it reminds me of Pan's Labyrinth. It takes me back to Pan's Labyrinth where I'm moving away, watching out for the dude that's doing the little thing. <laughs> and the Billy Goat's chasing you little kids around. And you're trying to do this cool thing like with Coraline where you're trying to find all the little bobbles 
pupils of all the children's eyes to rescue them and get out of the you know get out of the maze or whatever. It's just really fun, really really enjoyable. It has a little gimmicky aspect, which is the magnets, but that is what I really like about this game. And maybe I'm a fan of these kind of style games. Maybe you're not. It's definitely when you have to look at yourself and determine. But for me, this is a definite buy. This is my seal of approval and staying in my collection. In fact, I'll probably be back in the Kickstarter campaign myself because I really really like this game. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this game, you like to check out more videos, go to our YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. As well as checking out the description below, The Faceless, a cool magnetized game of being a, trying to avoid this Billy Goat in this crazy, like, wooden tree elf area. Really, really fun. As well as checking out unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And our affiliate sites, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and my personal friend, The Cardboard Stacker. Ferdinand. They do a great job and they do tons of, tons of tutorials and blog posts, even more than my own site. Alright guys, that's all I got for this one. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.